most secluded towns in the United States. Hey everyone, it's Alexa again and welcome back to another video. The United States of America with a population of around 325.7 million is a constitution-based federal republic with Washington DC as its capital. The landscape changes vastly across the country from tropical beaches to snowy peaks and everything in between. The city with the highest population is New York City and the least populated city is Vacaville in California. Today, we are going to visit some of the most secluded towns in the USA. But before we get into today's video, make sure that you are subscribed and ring the bell so that you never miss any of our upcoming videos. Mentone, Texas With no hospital, no grocery store, and no banks, you must wonder how the 19 residents of Mentone survive their everyday lives. This little town is in Loving County, and the local sheriff was quoted as saying, if you've got to have rattlesnakes or lawyers, which one would you have? The entire county was last said to have 82 people living there. The town is 75 miles west of Odessa. Mentone wasn't always this empty, and in its heyday in the early 1900s, the town had five cafes, five gas stations, hotels, drugstores, dance halls, and even a barber. It's also the home of the first female elected sheriff in Texas, Edna Reed Clayton DeWeese, in 1945. Barrow, Alaska Alaska is a good place to live if you want to escape the crowds, and there you'll find a small town previously called Barrow, now known as Utkiadvik. Located just north of the Arctic Circle, this town is home to 4,000 residents. The climate is cold and dry, and even in the summer, it doesn't get very hot. There are no roads connecting this isolated town to the rest of Alaska, and you need to fly in and out. Don't be surprised if you see polar bears on the runway. Even the local school must fly in opposing teams when they want to play home game football matches. Crested Butte, Colorado Called the last great Colorado ski town, Crested Butte is a ski resort that spans across 0.7 square miles. What began as a mining town is now home to 1,487 residents with its own little airport and Nordic Center. Like many mining towns, when the natural resources deplete, the people make a hasty exit. It's been classed as the wildflower capital of Colorado. The closest town is Gunnison, 21 miles away. It's worth a visit for the incredible skiing and snowboarding, and in the summer, mountain Mountain biking is breathtaking. Crested Butte claims to have created the sport of mountain biking. Marfa, Texas. We head to the desert and visit Marfa, where you'll learn the residents by name. It's here that you'll find that little Prada shop in the middle of nowhere. Several movies have been filmed here, including There Will Be Blood and No Country for Old Men. The city was founded to serve as a water stop during the 1880s, and the closest airport is El Paso, a three-hour drive that is barren, so make sure your tank is full before leaving Marfa. Supai, Arizona. Officially the most remote town in the lower 48, you'll need to head in the direction of the Grand Canyon to visit. You'll need to ditch your car along the way, though, and hop in a helicopter, hike, or climb on the back of an unsuspecting mule. There's a hotel, a restaurant, and a small grocery store. The 2010 census confirmed the population to be 208 and is eight miles from the nearest road. You won't find a car in the city at all. It's the best place to begin your journey to the Wigliva Rock Formations, and from there, you'll come across several mind-blowing waterfalls. Angle Inlet, Minnesota. To get to this little spot, you need to enter Canada, then exit Canada just to reach it by land. Not too many American cities can boast needing a passport to travel to. Located along the Lake of the Woods, this secluded town is home to roughly 100 people. They have one post office and a school with just one classroom. The highlight is a visit to the Fort St. Charles, a reconstructed 1732 outpost. Don't bother packing your wallet, though. There's no gift shop to spoil your loved ones at home. Bonneville Salt Flats, Utah. If you're fed up with people and need to get away to a place where the chances of bumping into someone you know are remote, then this is the spot to head to. Speed thrill seekers love heading here to attempt breaking land speed milestones. The area is flat and barren and made up of a 30,000 acre expanse of hard, white salt crusts on the western edge of the Great Salt Lake Basin in Utah. Do people live there? No, they stay in neighboring towns, but it's worth a mention because if you're out here and you're stuck, you're gonna have a problem. There are no stores gas stations, or access to water, and cell phone reception gets poorer the further you drive. 
Jordan Valley, Oregon. It covers a mere two square miles. This small town is surrounded by beautiful stretches of Rocky Mountains. There are 181 residents and their mayor is Marie Kirshner. The town is mainly home to sheep and cattle farmers and their main tourist attraction is the Jordan Crater Field, which is made up of extinct volcanoes and splatter cones. The closest town is 30 miles away, called Murphy. Jordan Valley is a great place to fish and hunt and if you're passing through US Route 95, you could have a pit stop here and restock your supplies. Eureka, Nevada. On Highway 50, you'll have to look hard to find Eureka because despite it being on a major roadway, it's a rather secluded spot. The closest town to Eureka is 77 miles away. There are around 610 people living here, and it's also home to an elaborate opera house. The quaint architecture is one of the main draw cards to this little town, but once you're there, don't expect to go anywhere else in a hurry. Wilderness Waterway, Florida. Heading to this area of Florida is like entering another dimension, and although it's not a city where residents live, if you're making your way down here, ensure you are well equipped to cope with 99 miles of untouched wilderness. Gators and crocs outnumber the people, and you're surrounded by marshes, mangrove forests, and a plethora of birds and reptiles. The nearest dirt road is 17 miles away, and only accessible from certain points. So if you've forgotten your bug spray, best you make friends with those mosquitoes. Williams, Arizona. This town is large in comparison to some previous entries with a population of just over 3,000. It's an hour away from the Grand Canyon and forms part of the historic Route 66. You're surrounded by forests on one side and mountains on the other, and even though it's a small spot, there is a lot to do. You can experience Bearizona, a wildlife park where you experience bears in their natural habitat. Fishing, hiking, and other outdoor activities also keep the tourists heading to this little spot. Plus, a trip on the train taking you to the Grand Canyon Village is a must. It's certainly worth the trip. Jarbidge, Nevada. There are only two dirt roads that will lead you into Jarbidge, Nevada. One is 80 miles long and it's not always open. When it snows, you're not getting through and that is sadly most of the year. The best time to plan a visit is in spring where there is an abundance of wildflowers. The little town has no paved roads so you need a robust vehicle. The name comes from the Shoshone language and means devil. It was believed the hills around the town were haunted. The population in 2016 was a mere 116. Arthur, Nebraska. When the only church in town is made from baled straw, you're already learning a lot. Arthur may be small, but it's worth a trip off the beaten track. Their tiny courthouse doubles up as a museum, and the city is home to 117 residents. Founded in 1913, the town and county derived their names from President Chester A. Arthur. When the little town took off, it was home to a general store, a newspaper, church, one-room high school, and a bank. Arthur got electricity in 1926, although the rest of the county trailed behind only getting power in the early 50s. Edna Bay, Kosciuszko Island. This remote and tiny town is located on Kosciuszko Island and boasts a shop, church, marina, and a few houses. If you're keen to get away from it all, this is the place to go. It's advised to kit yourself out for survival in the wilderness because the little shop is not that well stocked. There are only 49 people living there and they're mainly loggers and fishermen. There's a small town nearby called Cape Pole, but there are only 100 people living there, so their setup is, you know, kind of the same. Before Cape Pole was around, the nearest town was Peterburg. 31 miles away, and when conditions were icy, that town may as well have been in another country. Kalau Papa, Hawaii. This unincorporated community is on Molokai Island, the least visited island in Hawaii. The only way in is by sea or mule train, and the town hugs the coastline of Kalawao County. Back in the 1800s, this used to be a leper colony and is now home to 122 permanent residents. The area is preserved and known as the Kalau Papa Leprosy Settlement and National Historical Park. The town has one post office, a small church, and 2,000 unmarked graves. Sadly, you can't just pay a visit to this remote area on a whim. You need to be invited by one of the 122 residents or go through a predetermined tour operator. Winnet, Montana. This secluded town is in Petroleum County, Montana and is home to 185 people. In 2007, this little town convened its third jury ever. It has government offices, two gas stations, a post office, two bar and grills, and that is pretty much it. The nearest medical center is in Lewiston and there's not even a hotel for you to stay in if you're keen to visit. The town was named after Walter John Winnett, who ran away from his Canadian home to seek adventure in quote-unquote Indian country. He was an excellent shot. He built a ranch in the area, which served as a place for dances, weddings, school, funerals, and services. 
Whittier, Alaska. There's a two and a half mile tunnel that gives you access into Whittier, Alaska, and it's only accessible during daylight hours. Less than 200 people have made this chilly town their home, and most of them live in one building, Begich Towers. They receive 55 feet of snow throughout the year, so pack your snow gear. It's been called the town under one roof, and besides most of the people living in that one building, inside there you will also find their police station, grocery store, a church, clinic, and a school. You can visit this secluded spot because because in Begich Towers is also a and b Plus, if you're snowed in and can't get home, you can always rent DVDs from the grocery store. Has anyone watching ever been to one of these secluded towns? If you haven't, would you go? Share your experiences with us in the comments below. Green Bank, West Virginia. Your first thought may be, it's not that difficult to access Green Bank in West Virginia, but here you are secluded in a completely different way. Wireless signals are illegal. That means no Wi-Fi, no cell phones, no radio. You get the point. The reason is that Green Bank is in the National Radio Quiet Zone, which is an area set aside by government so that government radio telescopes can operate without external disturbances. 